Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today I thought it would be fun to go and rank every single Terra Pokemon EX. So I did. There's 17 of them. And actually, before we get going, I need to jump in from the future with a quick correction. I made my list and recorded a video and somehow left out Mewtwo. Even though I knew where Mewtwo was going to go, I don't ask me how it happened, all right? But basically, the numbers at the top of the screen are going to be right. I'm going to say the wrong numbers for a bunch of Pokemon. It's going to be one higher than it should be, like Toxtricity should actually be 15, but I'm going to call it 14. Sorry about that. But the numbers at the top of the screen are correct. The list is correct. I had to add Mewtwo in at the end because somehow... I, I didn't put it in. I don't know how that happened, all right? I'm sorry. But let's rank all the Terror EXs. There's 18, and we're going to rank them, and it's going to be fun. Seriously, it's going to be fun. And then we can argue in the comments, and that's going to be fun too. Let's go. Let's start off with number 17, the worst one. It's Dragonite. I'm sorry, it is Dragonite. Uh, fun little side note, because this was its own deck over in Japan, there is no other version of this, no full art, etc. Look, it's a stage two... And, okay, fine, it attacks for two energy, but it's two different energy, and you need to flip heads to do 280. And, yeah, fine, if you flip heads, it's fine, but look, it's a stage two that uses two different kinds of energy and has a 50-50 shot of being garbage. Nah, mate, I'm putting this in at number 17. Now, I'm going to be honest, until we get to the top three, this list is a little bit of a mess. A lot of these are, hey, they've got a bunch of potential, but they haven't really seen much play. I still feel good about my list. In at number 16, we've got Dedene. And what we got with Dedene is two energy, move all damage counters from one of your bench Pokemon to your opponent's active. And yeah, it's a basic, which is cool, but it's got very low HP, it only really becomes good if you've got a very heavily damaged bench Pokemon. It's far too easy to play around. And free energy 170 is terrible. Oh, the more I think about it, there's a strong argument to put Dedenne in at number 17. Never mind. In at number 15, we've got Slowking. I actually like Slowking's second attack. Two energy, 130. Search your deck for up to two cards, put them in your hand, and shuffle your deck. My problem with Slow King is a few things. Firstly, it's multiple energy. Secondly, it's low damage. Thirdly, stuff like Iono is seeing way too much play. So, even if this actually works, and you get this going, and you put up with the low damage output, there is an excellent chance that before you ever get to use those two cards, your opponent is going to Iono you. Hand Disruption is much bigger in this format than it has been in previous formats, and I just don't think this is ever really going to work. Plus, I've never seen this card actually work. In at number 14, we've got Toxtricity, and Toxtricity is another one of those Pokemon that's just a bit meh. Free Energy 270 is fine, but it's still a stage two, and you've got to get free energy on and then discard all three of them. I mean, eh. I do like the fact that it is lightning energy, but it's a fighting type, which means you can hit a good weakness in a lightning deck. But the reality is this is another one of those that just takes too long to get going. Also, you've got annoying things like it uses lightning energy, but it's not a lightning Pokemon. So you can't actually use electric generator to accelerate energy to it because electric generator only accelerates to lightning Pokemon. And yeah, this is another one of those bit of potential, but largely just a mess. In at number 13, we've got Tyranitar. This is one that I really want to be good. But it suffers from being a stage 2. Now here, it's actually kind of the wrong way round. Because lightning Pokemon being fighting is much more useful in the metagame. Than l fighting Pokemon being lightning. Sorry about that. And I do like single energy 120. There's a lot of potential there. And that will KO some support Pokemon like Luminion. Which is cool. And I do like 2 energy 150. But if any of your bench have any damage on it does 250. 250 is actually pretty good, and it's not like Dragonite where you're flipping a coin. This one's actually kind of reliable. The reality of the situation is, though, it's a stage 2 with an awkward energy. It's not easy to accelerate fighting energy. And that's basically where we end up here. Could be kind of fun, but it's probably never actually going to work. 
In at number 12, we have Gyarados. And I want to like Gyarados. I really like the fact that we've got 5 energy, 180. But if there's any damage on it already, which isn't that hard to do, you do 360. And this exists in a world where we have Baxcalibur to accelerate energy. And this is the part of the video where I'm not loving every single card, let's be clear. But I am starting to look at this and go, you know what? That could work. Sure, it's very expensive. Sure, you have to get some damage on. This is not perfect. I'm not claiming it is. But there is so much damage potential here for Gyarados. Got to at least consider it. In at number 11, we got everyone's favorite. They played against on PDCG Live. We've got Arcanine EX. And this one is fine. It's got an Outrage attack, 2 energy, 30 plus 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon, and then 3 energy, 250, discard 2. It's alright. It's fine. Obvious combo here with Magma Basin to both accelerate energy and get a bit of damage on there, which is alright. It's decently bulky. It does decent damage. We got decent energy acceleration. Nothing about this card is exceptional, but it is decent. Sorry. In at number 10, we've got Frostlass. And I know a lot of people like Frostlass a lot more than I do. But I do think there is a little bit of potential here. The ability says that if it's active and is knocked out, you flip a coin. And if heads, it only gives up one prize. The attack is fine. 2 energy, 140 plus 20 to the bench. But the idea that on a coin flip, this turns into a single prize Pokemon. Yeah, that is not the kind of thing your opponent wants to be dealing with. In at number 9, we've got Greedent, and maybe I love Greedent too much, and I'm being biased here, I don't really care. As a side note, along with Dragonite, this is the other one which came in its own deck. They were a pair of decks, and that means that there is no special version of it. It is literally just a case of, this is the only one you've got. And I do kind of like this one. This I've tested with this way more than anyone reasonably should have. But a single energy, draw free. But then actually you don't have to draw them. You can trash them and or discard them and draw the next three. Wish it was on a basic. And free energy 210. Colorless Pokemon. It is not perfect and I'm not pretending it's perfect. But we do have a bunch of other Greedent that you can use here to go along with it. Including, well, the one I particularly like is the one from Lost Origin. The, if you discard your hand and there's five cards, you do 210 for a double colorless energy. And look, I I'm not claiming this is perfect, but I am claiming you got a decent draw attack. You've got a decent attack attack. And you've got some other greed that you can kind of play along with it as friends. And this is one that I've absolutely got my eye on. In at number eight, we've got Vespaquen, another one which I think other people might be higher on than I am, but I can see the point of Vespaquen here. What we've got is single energy, heal 60 from one of your Pokemon. Okay, fine, that's pretty terrible. But free energy, 200, and place three damage counters on each of your opponent's bench Pokemon that already has any damage counters on it. So as long as your opponent's got some damage on the field, you can use Vespaquen to just start building it up and building it up and building it up. And sure, the energy acceleration isn't perfect. Once again, not claiming it is. But we do have Gardenia's Vigor, which can be used here. Not claiming it's amazing. I'm claiming that it works. And incidentally, that does attach to any Pokemon. It doesn't have to be a grass Pokemon. So yes, it does actually work here. And again, I'm not talking about some amazing game-breaking Pokemon. It's been out for long enough that we know it's not an amazing game-breaking Pokemon. But I do think there is enough potential here to take this seriously. In at number seven, we've got Ice Q. And sure, I revealed this one in English, so sure, I'm a little bit biased. Don't even care. Because I think this one has huge potential. It is a fire Pokemon that uses water energy, which means it goes beautifully into Baxcalibur decks. And this is part of the reason I love this so much. It is a basic Pokemon that can fit into an established archetype. This is why it gets high on the list. It's got easy energy acceleration and it's a basic. Both of those things elevate it against other Pokemon that may initially look a little bit better. 
Also, it's got an attack that says the defending Pokemon cannot attack next turn, which could buy you a little bit of time. In at number six, we've got Serena, another one that a lot of people are posting about, which I don't like nearly as much. But single energy, you get to put a Pokemon down to 30 HP, and then there's all kinds of fun things you can do, like, for instance, Yoga Loop. And yes, I know Yoga Loop only drops two damage counters, and here you need three. It's an extra 10 damage. You'll be fine. You'll make it work. Point is, this can bring any Pokemon down to be in very easy KO range for just a single energy. And sure, it's a stage two and it's awkward. I understand and acknowledge that. But I also think this one has a huge amount of potential and is one that I have absolutely got my eye on. In at number six, we've got Mewtwo. And Mewtwo is one of those. It's decent and it's basic, so it's going to get quite high up on the list. I like that for a single energy, you can attach two basic psychic from your discard to any Pokemon you like. That's really cool. And for two energy, 10 plus 30 more for each psychic energy attached to all of your Pokemon. I was convinced this was going to be a really good deck with the Zartu that came around in the same deck in Japan. As a side note, this also has no extra versions because it was its own deck in Japan. And it's not happened yet. But if we ever get really good Psychic Energy Acceleration or people figure out that that Zartu is actually good and start playing it, then we are going to end up in a situation where a lot of people are going to be loving this. And this is going to be a very, very, very nice attacker indeed. You have been warned. Now, in at number five, we've got Garchomp. And there is a chance this is wish casting on my part. Because I do love me some Garchomp. And the thing is, it's it's a stage 2 and it uses fighting energy, but it never uses multiple. It's either 2 energy, discard 2, 120 to one of your opponent's Pokemon anywhere on the field. That's really good. Or single fighting energy, 160, and attach 3 basic fighting from your discard to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. That is also really good. I adore... Door the attacks on Garchomp. And sure, it's a stage two. Uh, for what it's worth, it is the second highest stage two on the list. The other one's pretty obvious if you play the game. But yeah, the attacks here are good enough that I'm putting it top five. In at number four, I'm going to pop Hooper. And Hooper is one of those that hasn't really seen any play yet, but it's too tantalizing to not put it on. Once again, it is a fighting type, which is a great type, hitting weakness on colorless, on a bunch of darkness, on lightning, etc. It's a great weakness to hit. Free energy, 200, nobody cares. But two energy, 50 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. This is a great basic tech. And I know we can't use Dark Patch because it's not a Darkness Pokemon. That does actually make me a little bit sad. But honestly here, this is about the best candidate for Energy Switch we've got in the game. Or at least one of them. Because all you need to do is play it, attach an Energy, Energy Switch a second. And then all of a sudden you've got this one attacker coming out of nowhere. Which can do huge damage if your opponent's played a bunch of Energy down. I know it's not seeing any play at the moment, but I actually feel really good putting it in at number four because I do think the potential is huge. Now, a lot of the list, you can flick things around here, there, and everywhere. I believe in the top three, and I believe that in at number three is Foratress. And I am well aware that Foratress has not been seeing as much play, love, and success as I was hoping, but the fact of the matter is it's always there. The ability says you can search your deck for five basic grass, attach them, and then KO this. And look, accelerating five energy is great. And giving up two prizes isn't ideal. But we have Iono. And we have Roxanne. And either of those cards, when you've blown up two Foratress here, will be great for putting your opponent down to a two-card hand while you then sweep with whatever you've put 10 energy on. And the fact that we've got these comeback cards that can make giving up prizes actually useful, the fact that you accelerate so much energy here, the attack is irrelevant. No one's attacking with this. I do think there is a lot of potential here. And this is one that I think could legitimately be great. In at number two, I am delighted to say... We've got Skeleturge. I love Skeleturge. Skeleturge is another one of those that doesn't have any other versions because it was its own deck over in Japan. And the attack is kind of meh. 
But the ability here lets you discard a basic fire energy from your hand, and then attacks used by your Pokemon do 60 more damage to your opponent's active. We've already seen this seeing a little bit of playing success, especially over in Japan. And I'm not saying it's taking down massive tournaments or anything like that. But seriously, there's only one Pokemon on this list that is. And that's very obviously in at number one. But the fact of the matter is this has huge potential. And I think this is great. And you can play it with Green and VMAX. And I've already kind of given away in this video I'm a bit of a Green and VMAX fanboy. So, and that one takes extra prizes when you take a care one of basic. Love it, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. And then obviously number one is Charizard. And it's by a mile. Like Charizard is number one by a huge mile. Like if Charizard is a 10 out of 10 card, nothing else on the list really gets above a 6 or a 7. There are a bunch of cards on this list that have a lot of potential. Charizard is the best by a mile. By an absolute country mile. Just went and won San Antonio Regionals. It's one of the very best decks. There's a strong argument at the moment that it is the best deck in the format. And none of the others have even seen consistent play. You've got the ridiculous ability lets you search your deck for free basic fire and attach them any way you like when you evolve it. Or for 2 energy, 180, plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. And this is where I give my third Iono shout out of the day. Because your opponent takes two or three prizes, you Iono them down to a small hand, and then start wrecking with Charizard. It is number one, and it's not even close. In fact, I did my top 10 EXs the other day. Charizard's actually the best EX in the game, Terra or otherwise. So there we go. Sorry about the forgetting Mewtwo and getting a couple of numbers mixed up, but I have now ranked them all, and now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me how excited you are. Tell me where your list would go, and if you want to rank all of them... I would be delighted to read it. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shout outs on the channel, like the lovely Chelsea Rose, who's been one of our biggest supporters for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to Chelsea Rose for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.